Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Well, hello there guys and girls, my name's Mikey, welcome back to my room, it's time for another tutorial. And today friends, we're going to be taking a look at how to draw cloaks, or more accurately capes, because I think they're a bit shorter, for your anime, manga, characters, although really, this is just going to work for any type and design, because we're going to be looking at how uh, longer flowing material behaves, just using capes as an example, and really the main two types of folds that you're going to want to become familiar with, uh, drop folds and pipe folds, and how they just work kind of hanging off of the human frame. So on screen I'm just very quickly, very lightly and very badly putting together um, just some vague humanoid female figures so that we can hang some material off them. If you're wondering what's going on here and how I use basic shapes to build these characters up, there is a link right now in the top right of your screen about building up characters from basic shapes. We've covered all of this previously and really we're just going to dive in so that we can recognize these folds as well as you guys learning how to draw some capes really hopefully what we're going to do today is give you guys the tools to recognize how these folds are working in lots of types of clothing just so that you can crack on and get a bit more personal with your own design work as well Okay guys, and yeah, welcome on in. So just worth mentioning, if you want to grab your own copy of this particular sheet before we hang some clothes on these characters, you can do so from my tutorials work pack, which contains uh, all of the bits that I've got for just a dollar on Patreon, links of course below. But really I'm just going to crack on with some plain printer paper, a few sheets down, super disposable cheap mechanical pencil, it's basically a 2B, and I've drawn these uh, lady figures in relatively lightly because I'm going to try to very firmly draw on the clothing and then probably have to erase them underneath so that it's nice and clear for you guys. But let's just firstly talk really quickly about those folds. So I've mentioned drop folds and pipe folds. Uh, the very simple version is uh, pipe folds kind of when you have a strip of material and it folds like this. Now this is going to be very, very terrible, so please don't hate me. Something like so. And a good example of that would be where you've got a skirt. So let's say that it's very pinched at the waist of a particular skirt, very wide at the bottom, and you might just find that you've got all of these pipe fold shapes coming in just to kind of describe how this material really just doubles back over on top of itself, just like so. And then, so let's just call that our pipe folds. Don't worry, this isn't the main bit. And then we've got drop folds as well, which is really when you just got material hanging from a point or reference point. So if you imagine that we've got like a, a marble in the air and then you just drop like a, a towel over it or something like that, you'll notice that the material kind of just forms these kind of shapes where it just zigzags out on these material forms and then kind of comes back on itself just really hangs something like so up to its main tension point and we've talked about materials before a bit our very basics about thinking in terms of triangles again a link's just up there um, but again you're going to see there's really just a lot of kind of triangular shapes that you can still half cheat your way around happening inside of here as well now we're probably going to make them more curving flowing triangular shapes and maybe the bottoms of these triangles are going to be all sorts of wibbly wobbly lines but it does mean that once you get used to this you can kind of go very abstract very quickly imagine we've got a character here this is just a head and this is for character's shoulders i want to give them a big billowing cloak or cape i could just go wibbly wobbly like this no idea what i'm doing and then suddenly just decide to join up all of these edges to these curves suddenly decide, oh, these are all just loads of pipe folds in this cloaky, capey material after all, and then bish bash bosh, what a superhero, there you go, something like that. So that's kind of what we're thinking about, and that's kind of how we're going to be working, but I am going to try to take you guys along as quickly as possible, I don't want to keep you here forever, in terms of thinking about how this might hang on a character, so we're going to work our way around on this character by giving them a... Uh, a relatively low hanging cape. I think a cloak is heavy material that hangs past the knee and a cape is maybe a bit more fashionable, um, which is usually from the thigh and upwards, but that's not really my strong suit. And by the way, I'm working on another strip of paper here just to rest my hand on so that I don't smudge my work. Now, 
I like to think about those uh, hanging points, those tension areas that tends to be where I start. With this character in this arm forward, I'm going to have a cape where maybe just there's material that clasps in the middle. So let's just draw a very basic shape here that's going to be our clasp. And then I might just have this hanging and folding all the way down this inside edge of our character, somewhere right down towards the thigh. And then I'm going to start to think, okay, along the line of the shoulder, there might be just a little bit of folded material there, just a cheeky triangle shape as we just hang over the edge there. Because the material's pulling flat over the shoulder, it's not going to kind of uh, ruffle and curve. It's going to be pulling down fairly taut and straight. And then we're going to have some interesting things happening on the inside edge. Now, what I like to do sometimes as a very loose guide is just draw an abstract shape to give me the overall idea of the limits of the form. So I'm just going to do something vaguely like this and then vaguely like that. So I know that I'm kind of going to be filling up this area to a certain degree. And then I'm going to come up to where the hand is and just start to show that, OK, this is pulling material up and we're going to get one of these wavy lines coming out and around. So I might start to bring a line that just curves out around a little bit here, but then just keeps that in and out wibbly wobbly feeling so that it goes back out like that to the most extreme point there. And then maybe it's going to start to curve back in. Because it's pulling material up and over itself, it's folding it, I might just then have this particular edge just come all the way out like so before just kind of curving in. And again, we're doing that wibbly wobbly kind of thing over there until I bring things back down around to the front. And then now I'm going to start to work my way up the edge of the arm to catch any folds and bits. So again, this isn't going to be the world's most exciting or amazing cape designs. I want to keep it relatively simple to not over bombard you. But essentially, we've got some pipe folds kind of going on where things are overlapping. But also really, it's a tension fold or a drop fold starting from the shoulder and coming down, but being twisted a little bit as it works around the arm. So I'm going to just go up along this forearm here until I come towards the joint. And I'm going to just think of a slight curving triangle shape, maybe one there, and then maybe just another here, as that arm just curves around ever so slightly. And then maybe I've just got another fold or crease of material as it's all getting compacted, coming up inside of this edge before reaching around up towards that shoulder like so. And then on the outside, I'm just going to follow along the edge of the arm. The material's hanging over this edge, a bit more taut, less kind of uh, ruffles and folds, sweeping down towards the first of our curves here. And then we've got the outside edge of the curve here, which I'm just going to bring out in a slightly straighter, firmer line as we just come down here. And then as I just kind of join this up here and bring it all back in, maybe we're just going to start to describe some form on the inside edge where we've got the arm going up in the inside, not quite a sleeve, just an area of this particular cape that's being pulled up and around. And then again, wherever I've got these edges to my lines, I'm just going to start to build back up towards the back, towards the shoulder. So let's get a bit there for the outside edge. And then we've got a bit of sweep up here, which I'm going to bring up like so. And then maybe just down here as well, I might just put in one more line, just around about the five, but a very, very slight one. And that's just going to give me something to just show is going to follow up the line of the body as well. So just up here, and then maybe that's going to sweep out towards the right. And then on this side, let's have things just sweeping out a little bit because I've got this leg coming forward, um, but we're still doing a very similar thing. So I'm going to start from this tension point here, which is our clasp, I guess. We're going to just ride over the curve of the boob a little bit there as we come down. And then I'm just going to let this kind of all sweep out and just catch a little bit of a wind. So it's going to come maybe down around about there. I'm going to very vaguely put in a shallow shape for my outline just around about here up towards the shoulder there, just so I know again what kind of space I'm working with. And then I'm going to come up and around and do a very similar thing. I'm going to just bring a little bit up here, follow this line of the shoulder where everything's hanging and pulling relatively straight. And then maybe now I'm just going to think, right, I've got a bit of wibble just there for a line. Um, I might just have a little bit more out there. And then really everything else is just going to hang a little bit more flatly off the shoulder. So if I have this line come up in here and this one 
come up in here and again I'm just going to make these nice and firm so that they pop a bit more against my reference body that's just underneath and then maybe I'm just going to have some bits that come in a little bit more catch just the outside edge of a boob for a bit of tuck just in there and then just sweep and hang a bit more sturdily out and what you can see I'm doing is I'm using this height reference here okay at our most extreme points when we come out this kind of edge curves coming to about this point in this line so I'm just going to make sure that this one drops to a very similar area like so and then I'm just going to sweep up again right up towards the shoulder and so this side's very much more uninterrupted the arms flowing back everything's kind of happening a bit more in the background I could probably fit another one in there if I wanted to but that is our overall shape our overall design idea of what's going on so let's just sweep up there and I'm going to firm these up and make them even clearer in just a moment for you but let's dive in and take a look from a slightly more difficult angle so with this character here I'm going to um, probably give him a hood for a start so where I've got this tension area up here again hanging off the shoulders I'm actually just going to bring a hood line up that covers just a bit of a cheek and goes out over the neck. We're going to do um, some tutorials about hoodies and different clothing designs, a bit more particularly in a little bit further down the line. So let's just have a hard edge of material for our hood edge that comes down there. Now, I cannot stress this enough. Look at as many examples of real people wearing cloaks and capes. I don't know if it's Renaissance stuff or fashion. I really don't mind. But seeing the material and understanding where these folds are and what's happening is going to be great. This hood is very arbitrary. So I'm just showing a few triangular shapes that are just trying to have material that's kind of sitting in itself and rolling back over the edge just so that I can start to drop down. Because also, the more you look at that stuff, the more you're going to ever so slightly fall in love with the idea of capes. Capes need to come back into fashion. But that's a conversation for another day. And now as we come down here, maybe in terms of this one, this arm is going to be pulling forward on the material and pulling the material out. So I'm going to roll along the shoulder and I'm going to think, okay, maybe I'm just gonna have some material that catches an elbow edge there. Maybe I'm gonna come down the front here and really just relatively happily follow the line of the arm as it goes down the front. But then I'm going to start to swing a shape in it's going to be like so. So it's probably going to just pop behind this one a little bit. They're quite close together. And then maybe I'm going to have this shape come back up into the top of the shoulder there. So again, a little bit of an idea of how much space it's occupying on this edge. But this is going to be our sort of uh, area that's raised up by the arm. And that might still be kind of doubling back folding material. So I still might actually have a fair bit more that's going to be coming down around the front as well and what I'm talking about there is let's just see if I can give you a very very bad very quick example this is very rough around the edge but let's say we have a triangle of shape out here this is the worst thing I've ever done and this is supposed to represent a person standing here with their arm out in a cloak in a cape if we just bend that arm at the middle and fold it in you'll notice and here's the back edge and you can still see their face on the front, you'll essentially notice that this area as it goes up here, even if we fold it back in, is still continuing to go up. We're still going to work up towards these arms, even if this arm was out in this direction, we'd still follow this curve in, but we're just going up and following it back up towards the wrist fair. And don't worry if that doesn't make too much sense. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more examples of this stuff in the future, probably put together a large reference pack as well. So anyway, now that I'm up here by this wrist, I'm just going to start to have some uh, pull lines. It's gonna pull relatively firmly as that arm goes forward before I start to just kind of go, okay, let's just wibble and wobble just a little bit. Let's just double back on a few areas, sweep out a little bit. Maybe I'm gonna wibbly wobbly back up towards there. And now I can bring these back in. This edge here is gonna come round the back of this shoulder, I think that's where it's really pulling the most. So let's sweep right up towards there. I don't need to draw the lines too much over the shoulder or over the top of the back itself because again, the material's working a bit flat around there. And then maybe just up here, I'm going to put in another couple of examples. This line is just gonna show some shape up there. And I might just put in some of that abstract triangular motion 
maybe just a bit here and then something in there that might just kind of delineate a few folds and other bits in the material. And then here where I've got this other line, I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this right back up to here. Nice and strong, sweeping round underneath. And then very similar, let's just come back up and around the back like so. And then maybe if we just finish that tuck one there, and then just a bit down and around the front as well. Just like so, maybe a little bit around there. So again, we've just got this kind of line that's just going in and out and all over the place. Here's the outside edge of this one. But what we're kind of talking about is that on the other side of the sleeve, what's coming back down here. Let's even erase that bit there to just show that kind of separation of material as this continues around the front and comes up to the arm before going over the top and coming around the back. So that gives you an idea of what we're talking about with these shapes, guys. I'm going to drop into time lapse and I'm going to do the exact same thing from the back just so that you can see what's going on. And I'm going to give it just a little bit of air coming up, just catching a little bit of wind and getting a little bit more abstract, but still we're not quite doing these massive billowing superhero cakes. These are more uh, functional style uh, capes at the moment. Um, but again, just to give you an idea of what's going on for those forms, and I will see you guys right at the end. Okay, so welcome back guys, and yeah, I just wanted to firm up some of these shapes so that they come across nice and clear, as well as just gently erasing out a little bit of the building structure underneath. Now, what I did firstly is I did these extra lines which are going along and around the edges of the hem of these kind of cloaks or capes, really because it helps um, accentuate the kind of flow and curve and the overall feeling of these things. So it's always nice to think about, okay, if I'm going to start applying maybe a pattern that's going to be appearing around the bottom of these characters, or um, maybe just a separate color, I could start to shade that in and darken it all out to really help give it some pop, you never know. Um, it really just helps sell the idea of all of these folds. You want these folds to be nice and readable. Now, again, I'm thinking about the uh, tension points as we've got these uh, drop folds for materials hanging off of the highest point of your character and maybe having to negotiate bumps and curves on the way around. And then we've got all of these pipe folds where it's doubling back and over itself as well. And really just a very similar situation coming on from this side. Sometimes you've got to just kind of think, okay, going up the sleeve and back down, things might be folding over a little bit. And uh, there's this kind of this vague similarity, but I'm starting to notice between capes and ponchos, depending on where you're representing them and what your angles are. But that is actually a different item of clothing altogether, which... Uh, uses stuff called diaper folds, which we can find out about in another tutorial further down the line. Of course, again, this entire pack is available on my Patreon's worksheet, so a great big thank you to the May patrons, including Marissa, Brendan J, Homongchi L, Danny S, Cairo N, and Justin J. Thank you so much for the support, you lovely people. I'll add this into the $1 tutorials work pack. And what I wanted to do with this character over on the right hand side is just kind of show that, look, we're trying to think very kind of structurally and technically about how this kind of is going to work. But don't forget that you can actually just loosen things up as long as it vaguely looks right. That's kind of art and it still counts. It doesn't have to be perfect. So in this example, I'm not going for crazy billowing. It's still relatively standing, but I just got a little bit loose and ready with this bottom ziggy zag wibbly wobbly curve and then just started joining up the lines just getting a bit of air billowing under the back edge here just throwing out the edge flicking it out to that side and then curving in on that side not perfectly accurately showing the structure pull point and edges of these things just to give a tiny bit more kind of weight and energy into what we're doing so that hopefully gives you a bit of an idea of what we're talking about when we talk about 
uh, drop folds and pipe folds and will hopefully give you a bit of fun when you're doing your own flowing robes for your character designs at home. More materials and other things will be in the future but guys get your sweet selves into the comment section below. Let me know what we need to be drawing next time around and I'll see you then. Take care.